13 true facts about the F-14 Tomcat. With the Cold War in full swing in the 1960s, both the US Air Force and the US Navy needed fighters that could wield the latest radar and weapon systems to stave off the looming threat of Soviet bombers and fighters. The Air Force was looking for a tactical fighter to replace the 105 Thunder Chief, while the Navy wanted a fleet air defense fighter. To save money, then Defense Secretary Robert McNamara proposed commonality on an aircraft that could meet the needs of both branches of the US military. While theoretically commonality made budgetary sense, the two branches had different design needs and any compromises built into the project still turned out to be entirely unsuitable for the Navy's ultimate needs. It's extremely fortunate that out of that project failure, Grumman was able to win the contract to design and build what became one of the ultimate fleet air defense fighters and went on to become a US Navy legend. Fact number one, the original Tomcat could have been an F-111B. While the F-111 was a remarkable aircraft in its own right, it featured several firsts for a fighter including variable geometry wing and an encapsulated ejection system which were beset with technical challenges and problems. The Navy had specific demands and requirements regarding the maximum length, height and most importantly weight for their fleet defense fighter. The requested 55,000 pound limit demand quickly ballooned even with weight saving measures during the program. Between the Air Force's demands for different specifications and failure to meet the Navy's design needs, a fully loaded F-111 could easily tip the scales at over 70,000 pounds. There were concerns that the weight of the F-111B could damage the decks of carriers operating at the time. Plans to use the F-111 as a workable Navy platform were ultimately scrapped and eventually Grumman edged out competitors for a replacement for the F-111 with its F-14 concept. Fact number two. How many concepts did Grumman ponder before finalizing F-14 designs? Grumman studied up to 6,000 different design variations before settling on eight final concepts with the winning one designated 303E. At that time, the original concept design saw the Tomcat have just a single vertical tail stabilizer, but it did have the famous variable geometry wing concept. The single tailpiece was eventually replaced with two vertical stabilizers due to its size and concerns about your control at low speed during engine failure. Point of comparison is the RAF Tornado, which has a huge tail to counteract your effect which can make it challenging to land in heavy crosswinds. Fact number three, the Tomcat was always a bombcat. The original concept was always designed as a multi-role aircraft with early sketches showing the plane carrying up to 12 500 pound bombs. It was however 20 years before the aircraft was ever used in the bombing capacity and many assumed therefore that the aircraft was never actually designed to be used in that role and was thus converted to do so later in its career. This is in fact not correct, it was simply never used in that role, with other aircraft like the Grumman A6 Intruder being one of the Navy's main fighter bomber aircraft until its retirement, negating the need to necessarily use the F-14 in that role. Fact number four. Grumman Engineering. To avoid wing pivot load failures seen in some F-111s which use steel, Grumman created a massive box structure to house the Tomcat's swip wing anchor points. These were made of numerous titanium parts and welded in a vacuum to avoid contamination. The five electron beam welders to construct the structure cost over one million dollars each. Fact number five, test plane crashes. The second flight of the early prototype of an F-14A in December of 1970 crashed, but fortunately the test pilots safely ejected. The cause was pinned down to failure of the hydraulic system and the two backup systems, stemming from technology that Grumman had designed for NASA's lunar lander. Liquid helium cooled sleeve connectors were fitted to titanium lines, which then expanded at room temperature and sealed the lines. However, the connectors were susceptible to cracking during harmonic influences in the aircraft, such as say at engine idle. In this case the test pilots had been testing the engines during that flight at idle mimicking engine failures. The connectors cracked causing a complete failure of the hydraulic pressure in the system and thus the ability of the pilots to control the aircraft. The plane crashed a mere mile from the runway. Fact number six, self-kill. In 1973 prototype number five shot itself down during weapons trials. A launched Sparrow missile immediately pitched up and struck the aircraft and forced the pilots 
to eject, giving prototype number five the ignominious distinction of shooting itself down. Fact number seven, Grumman almost went bankrupt producing the Tomcat. The contract price to produce the Tomcat by Grumman was negotiated on a fixed price, rising costs, and with both the Department of Defense and the Navy refusing to renegotiate that stipulated contract, it almost forced Grumman into bankruptcy until a compromise was reached. Ironically, now, perhaps, part of the cash flow problem was indeed solved by a hefty sales contract to Iran. But there was, as a result of these issues, considerable public scrutiny into the company's cash flow and business practices, and also criticism of the Navy's $11 million estimate for each fighter, which swelled to an almost 20 million price tag due to ongoing inflation and general price costs coming from subcontractor fees. A lot of this may sound strangely familiar in today's competitive aircraft development and bidding wars. Fact number eight, the first Phoenix. The first Phoenix missile was launched in 1972 at a target at a distance of 112 miles. In 1973, an F-14A launched six Phoenix missiles within 38 seconds. Only two of the missiles failed to strike targets. Of those two, one did fail, and a second was detonated by a rangemaster when the target drone went off course. Fact number nine, engine troubles. The early TF-30 Pratt & Whitney engines caused a number of aircraft losses due to catastrophic engine failures, due in part to substandard compressor blades which cracked and disintegrated causing massive damage to portions of the aircraft. The F-14A was grounded three times in the 1970s. While inspections and troubleshooting occurred, parts were replaced and engines were upgraded. Regardless, TF-30 engines were notorious for compressor stalls which may require an engine shutdown to prevent overheating damage or fire. Pilots had to be extremely mindful of flying to the engine and not to the F-14's airframe to prevent such stalls. Later variants of the engine reduced this probability, but certain parameters, like excessive low speed yaw, could see airflow disrupted to one of the engines and invoke a stall that could lead to unrecoverable departure. The GE-110 engines later installed in variants of the B and D Tomcats greatly improved the performance of the aircraft, especially in the low speed arena and while using high angle of attack maneuvers. Fact number 10. The television camera system found in the F-14A's chin was originally meant to be an IR seeker. However, it was found to be ineffective, difficult to use and canned in favor of the TCS system. Later D models were fitted with a more sophisticated IR system next to the TCS pod, which did cause extra drag and limitations due to friction heat. Fact number 11. The Phoenix missile was massive. Designed to take out heavy Russian bombers threatening to launch missiles against US aircraft carriers at range, the Phoenix missile carried by the Tomcat was massive. Weighing as much as a thousand pounds, early models were filled with cooling oil, which could leak and were difficult to maintain. Due to their almost 13 foot length and weight, the rails to hold them to the aircraft weighed over 400 pounds each in their own right. While the Tomcat could carry six of the missiles, this was not a practical loadout since if they were not used, the weight would make it unsafe to recover on the launching aircraft carrier. Fact number 12, upgrades. The Navy began upgrading its fleet of F-14s, which included the F-14A+, F-14B, and later D models. These featured improvements to electronic systems as technology advanced, and the addition of the much improved engines, the GE F-1110 400s, a variation on those fitted to the newly developed F-16 at the time. An F-14C was actually planned, which brought the aircraft up to all-weather attack capability and sported F-401 P-400 turbofan engines. However, the Navy elected to buy more intruders instead, and money destined for the F-14C, which was seen as cost prohibited, was redirected to the development project started in parallel to the F-16, we now know as the F-A-18 Hornet. Fact number 13, Tomcats retired. As costs continued to rise in maintaining the F-14A during its lifespan, plans were afoot to build 127 F-14Ds, which would improve on the F-14B and introduce much needed electronic upgrades, such as GPS technology, 
lantern pods and other electronic flight control systems. With the rapid advance in electronics, this would greatly improve the Tomcat's flight control systems and operation in a rapidly advancing electronic world. However, only 55 F-14Ds were built or refurbished from F-14A conversions as funding was essentially cut by Dick Cheney to the concerns about the ongoing costs to maintain the F-14 fleet in favor of the newer and more affordable F-A-18s. The last official Tomcat flight was logged on September 22, 2006 during a ceremony held at Naval Air Station Oceana. Ironically, the jet actually scheduled to fly that day suffered mechanical issues, not uncommon among fighter aircraft, and the crew flew in the spare aircraft, which, if Dick Cheney was aware, probably made him chuckle a little, the irony not lost. Well, I hope you enjoyed 13 true facts about the Tomcat. Despite being a complex and at times difficult to maintain aircraft, the big fighter went on to become a modern legend and captured the public's imagination in the 1984 film Top Gun. It was big, it was frighteningly fast, and in the right hands was a deadly dogfighter and fantastic fleet air interceptor. Sadly, no US Tomcats are flying today. Real-world examples are relegated to museum pieces, except for those from that original Iranian order. Some of these are still flying, although in debatable states of combat readiness. The good news is we can still enjoy the big cat in the virtual world thanks to heat blur simulations. The Tomcat lives on in DCS World, the world's premier combat flight simulator for the home PC, and also Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Both versions thanks to heat blur simulations and India Foxed Echo. This has been your host Prickly Hedgehog. Stay tuned for more true facts about the Tomcat and other aircraft in the near future. We'll see you next time. We're going 350. Six o'clock low. Seven o'clock. 300 knots. 12 o'clock. Speed 270.